just at 5 a.m. in the morning. You might be thinking, Westy, you know, you're crazy. Why are you getting up at 5 a.m. to go fishing? Uh, well, it's going to be an absolute scorcher today. So it's going to be about 28 degrees Celsius, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous for this country. Um, but uh, as you probably know, those kind of temperatures really put the fish off feeding. Um, anything so high it just takes the oxygen out of the water. The fish don't move out uh, around as much and they'll just sit up in the water and they just won't feed. So I've got it nice and early uh, to get a morning's fishing in before the temperatures start getting up. So I'm going to be fishing double method feeders today. Uh, I'm going to show you how I get set up for that and uh, give you some tips and tricks along the way. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the video you'll be able to fish double method feeders yourself and I hope you pick up a couple of things so grab yourself a brew and enjoy the video. First thing I want to get set up is my feeder chair. Um, I've obviously chosen my peg so what I want to do is um, I want to look to some kind of features to cast to and at this time of year obviously we want to be fishing in the margins as well so I'm going to adjust my feeder chair so that I'm angled where I can have one rod over to this side and uh, one rod over to this tree down here um, so I'm going to have one tip of the method feeders pointing that way and one pointing this way into the margin now for you beginners just starting out, you're probably not going to have a, a feeder chair or anything like that. So <clears throat> you want to plan and get your bank stick set up where you can. Or if you're using a rod pod, um, make sure your rod pod's set up in the right direction. So on my feeder chair here, I've got an arm. So I've obviously customised this with accessories to uh, suit what I want to do. but. Obviously I've got my rod butts here and then I've got a nice wide uh, rod rest which I'll show you in a second but I want to adjust this chair to the right kind of angle so that's probably about right I'm going to have one tip pointing that way one pointing this way um, fishing with my Shimano speed masters today And I've just got those paired with some 4,000 reels, Daiwa reels. Uh, 10 pound main line, which a lot of you might think is quite heavy. I'm fishing with elasticating method feeders. So uh, what I don't want is the line to snap for whatever reason. So I want it strong enough because I don't want a fish towing around a method feeder. Obviously they'd struggle to eject anything like that. So that's why i use heavy main line if i'm fishing normal method feeders i'll probably use something like eight pound line or even six sometimes in winter but the 10 pound line doesn't put the fish off now i always set my rods up the previous night just so as soon as i get on the bank i can just put them together and get fishing um this is why i do like these small rods these are a nine foot feeder rod uh, this particular model you can either have it as a nine foot or a 12 foot so it's really versatile to be fair with the places that i fish i never use a 12 foot i've always got it set to the nine foot configuration so that's one rod so that's a perfect amount of drag to start with you can just pull the line off the reel There we go, that's the rod set up. Um, I've obviously got some pre-tied uh, method feeder hook links, which I always do. I don't tie those up on the bank. It's too fiddly to be tying up on the bank. So these are my pre-tied hook links. I'm not sure how much you'll be able to pick up on the GoPro, um, but I'm fishing with uh, size 10s and size 12s, so a decent size of hook. Uh, I'm going to be fishing with probably 8mm or 10mm wafters. Um, there's some decent carp in here, so 
um, you need something fairly substantial and you're not going to get any hook pulls or anything like that then. So for your method feeders to work effectively you want to use a short hook link. Uh, this one's about 6 inch and what it does is it hooks on to the, uh, the, me the elasticated method feeder. Um, there's a little rubber sleeve uh, that covers up like a, a quick change hook. Uh, so it does loops over that, uh, it pulls back into the rubber sleeve and you're good to go. I always have plenty of these pre-tied hook links ready uh, so I can swap them out if I need to. Okay, so that's the uh, hook link on and it's good to go that one, just needs a wafter on there. Uh, I always strength test the rigs a little bit after I've tied them just to make sure that it's not going to snap at the knot or the hook. Now that we've got the rods set up and the uh, hook links on, uh, we need to prepare the ground bait. Uh, for this session, I'm going to be using a mixture of ground bait and uh, two mil pellets, a variety of two mil pellets. Um, so it's probably a 50-50 a mix. Uh, so obviously what we're going to do is we'll add a bit of water to that. I'm obviously eyeballing it, you can measure it if you want to, there's instructions on the packets, uh, but I tend to probably uh, over wet it a little bit and what happens is it just allows the two mil pellets to soak up some of that water. Um, so get it all mixed through, get it from around the edges. Then when you're pretty sure that everything's mixed through and you've not got any massive lumps, uh, you want to put it through a, a riddle just to make the uh, mixture nice and fluffy. It'll just help it break down in the water uh, once you've cast your method feeder in. So this uh, particular ground bait mixer that I've got here, it comes with the riddle itself. It's actually a really pretty neat setup. Uh, I like to travel as light as I can, so it saves carrying around a bucket and a riddle as well. Always take a towel with you. So that's pretty much as good to go. Uh, I've got both rods set up. Um, we just need to put a bait on each one. Uh, we've got our uh, feeder mix uh, ready to go. Uh, just need to screw the end of this uh, feeder arm on. So just screws on, make sure you've got it, uh, got it spinning before you uh, take your hand off it, otherwise it'll end up in the drink. Done that a couple of times. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to lower this feeder arm down a bit. You want your rod tips as close to the uh, close to the surface as the water as you can. It sends the line out in a in a good angle towards the uh, the feeder. Well, this pellets and ground baits looking good. Uh, so let's get the rods out. So the best thing about these elasticated method feeders is when a fish bolts off with the bait, uh, this elastic does help set the hook as well as the weight of the feeder. Obviously with a um, normal method feeder, the thing that will be setting the hook is obviously the weight of the, uh, the feeder itself and obviously the fish bolting against the rod tip. So I'm just going to grab a couple of things that I'm going to need, uh, disgorger, and um, I'm going to use an attractant on the feeder. So we'll use some uh, pineapple goo, just give it a bit of extra flavour. Uh, obviously wafters, of course, the main thing, can't forget those. Uh, this is just a mix of a few different wafters. Uh, in there I've got chocolate orange. I've got uh, Sonia Bates washed out, which are my favourite, these pink ones. Uh, the orange ones are the chocolate orange version. Um, they're the ones that I found work the best, so that's Sonia Bates uh, washed out. Uh, unfortunately, you've got to buy the full pack with all the different colours in. <laughs> I just think the pink work the best, so that's all I ever end up using. So if anybody wants any... Uh, <laughs> If anybody wants any yellow uh, wafters, um, you're more than welcome to have some. Last thing we need to do with this is just put the mix through the riddle, make it nice and fluffy. It's worth taking a little bit of time to do this. 
Uh, it does help it uh, stick to the method feeder. Um, it also helps, helps it break down better on the bottom. Uh, so you're not getting big chunks uh, falling off your method feeder. You know that it's all going to be a nice fine consistency. So you're not overfeeding the fish. So let's get rid of all those big chunks. So that mix is completely good to go. You can see I've got a mould on the chair there uh, for my individual method feeder. Uh, I'm only using a small method feeder. You could use a bigger one at this time of year. So you can see how it all uh, clumps together, but it also breaks down very easily. That ground bait, that's what you want. So uh, we're going to go with chocolate orange on this first one. So when you load in your method feeder, uh, you want to put a tiny bit in the feeder first, that'll cover the wafter, uh, and then cover it up completely, and then press your feeder into the mould, and then that should just pop out when you press the release button. So there you go, you've got a perfect package there, uh, ready for the fish. Uh, so the fish will come in and be feeding freely on those loose offerings that are breaking down off the feeder and then they'll find the hook bait, not realise and self-hook themselves. So I've just put a bit of attractant on there to get us going. Uh, that quarter pineapple goo is really good. I think that's probably the best flavour that they do. Obviously I'm not affiliated in any way with them, but I do use it. So just a light cast into that corner. Uh, where I've seen some fish movement before. I've got a feeling that'll go off really quick. Uh, so sink your line once you've cast out. So that just drops the line through the water uh, so the line's not floating on the surface. So I've set my feeder there, but it's not quite at the right angle. So uh, what I'm going to do is I want to uh, lengthen this feeder arm uh, to go past the next eye on the rod that I'll just help secure it into position Then I'll lock that in uh, Then what I'm going to do is uh, It's sunk under the, the tips sunk under the water surface. We don't want that So I'm just going to raise the feeder arm so that the uh, the tip of the rod is just above the water surface So I can see any indications or takes that I get so that rod's looking pretty good. I am just going to adjust the tip slightly. So I'm just putting more ten tension through the tip by uh, tightening the reel. So let's get the other one in the water. So I'm going to load this second fe uh, feeder up now. And that's going to be going in the opposite direction. So the tips aren't interfering with each other if I get a take or anything like that. I'm going to go with a pink wafter on this one. Uh, these wafters are 8mm, um, I think that works best with the size 12s that I'm using, make sure that they're balanced. So again, tiny bit of uh, pellets in the bottom, just to hide that wafter. Then press it into the mould, pop it out. Let's put that second rod out and notice this twitching, yeah that's going round, that's a definite bite. So I've just lifted up into it, uh, put steady pressure on the fish. These Shimano Speedmasters are definitely my favourite rods. Uh, they've got a great action. They bend all the way from the tip of the uh, the rod all the way to the base of the rod. Um, so obviously I'm keeping steady pressure on the fish here. Uh, the elasticated method feeder is doing a lot of the work. Uh, it's taking a lot of the bolts and uh, head shakes out of uh, the fish's fight. Um, feels like a half decent fish. When you're using the elasticated method feeders as well, they take a lot of the uh, a lot of the strain off the line. I've not got my drag set high at all here. It's just not taking line. I'll try and get my net over this other rod. Trying a new uh, angle on the GoPro, so um, I'm using the uh, the ultra wide rather than just a wide angle on the lens. 
feel like you'll be able to pick up more. Nice little common carp. Bad size that, I reckon that's about three or four pound. I wonder whether you can see it on the camera or not, but that um, that elastic's right stretched out. at all that I might have to uh, take him onto the grass to unhook him it's like a bit of an old warrior missing part of his lip there That's looking common. Let's get him back. Yeah, I think uh, four pound, maybe five. Now let's see if we can actually manage to get two rods out this time. Uh, so I'm just going to swing this one out down in the margins here. Uh, closer to the side, the better. Uh, I found a sweet spot to be about a foot. Um, but you know, it depends on the places I've been fish fishing places where I've only had it about six inches off the bank and that seems to work best. So just play about with it, but usually about a foot really close into the margins. You'd be surprised just how close in fish get. Uh, so I'm going to load this other method feeder up. Uh, we've kept our wafter on this, uh, which is good. Uh, so let's get it loaded. Just make sure that, um, your hook's okay after every fish. You can see how you can just see the wafter there on top, but it's nice and concealed. So try and get it back into the same spot. Nice, easy, overarm cast. And that's good. Sink the line again. And then I'm just going to pull some line off uh, just to release some of that tension on the tip there. So that's perfect. So they're set up great. If you are picking up a couple of tips from this video, guys, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really does help. Um, if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So if I wasn't fishing with an elasticated method feeder, um, what I would do is I'd have a more of an aggressive uh, bend in the rod tip so I'd have it a bit more like that um, but because they're elasticated the elastic's doing a lot of the work with the hooking uh, so you don't need as much tension against the rod tip so that's why this rod tip's quite slack um, like I say usually I'd have it a bit more like that uh, bent round to the feeder but you just don't need that with the elasticated uh, method feeders. That's because the elastic's doing a lot of the work in terms of self-hooking. Oh, there we go. So that's absolutely the shot off. Uh, just going to get the GoPro back on my head. Keep the tension on the line. Oh wow, 
Well, tail walking. What's that all about? It's right on the surface. Tighten that drag up a bit. Not happy at all, this one. So we'll, we'll uh, mirror that. There we go. Waft has come out in the net. Look at that. So a little carp. Really nice scale pattern on it. Awesome, so that's second fish in. So for those of you who don't know, if you're beginners, uh, the reason the method feed is so um, successful is that the fish is coming up to the feeder um, it's feeding on all the free offerings around uh, the bait so all the ground bait and the uh, the pellets that squirrels onto the method feeder and they're not even thinking about the hook bait and then obviously when they take the hook bait um, it does it does self hooks so that's why it's so effective Just builds the confidence of the fish up. Get that straight back on the rest. Easy. such an effective method for all course fish it's very very rare that I fish float anymore um, I just think this is so much more effective well temperatures started to pick up now uh, the Sun's well and truly up uh, I can feel it beaming down on my back uh, I've not had any fish after those first two it's gone really quiet uh, plenty of activity on the tips uh, what I mean by that is the rod tip um, uh, you know twitching uh, which can indicate you know fish are feeding around the feeder catching a line that kind of thing um, so I'm more than confident I'll get another couple of fish uh, before it starts to get too warm there's a oh my god <laughs> It's usually me that catches them. Poor thing, look at that. How's it done that? I know. <laughs> I do like gudgeon. <laughs> when you're fishing like this, make sure that you've got everything around you. So I've got my net to hand there. Um, I've got my uh, ground bait mix and I've got my wafters so everything's around me and I've got a side table for this chair as well but I'm usually too lazy to set that up so I don't know whether you could see it on the GoPro uh, but there's a, a quite a big breeze started to pick up uh, and that's blowing in towards me, which will uh, definitely help. 
fish tend to follow the wind, especially when it's warmer like this. So that'll push them into this corner where I am, hopefully. When you are fishing a method feeder, don't be scared about recasting as well. So that one's been in, I don't know, 10 minutes now. I'm gonna give it another five minutes and then what I'll do is I'll recast it. There's definitely still fish in that area where I'm fishing because uh, I keep seeing rolling. There's some bubbles coming up as well. I've not had any kind of indication down here yet. Just a quick tip that if I want to make micro adjustments to the tension on my rod tip to the feeder, what I'll do is I'll just turn the spool rather than turning the handle. So you can literally have full control over it. Which is a lot easier sometimes than, than turning the handle because obviously you can drag the feeder. So that's a really delicate way of adjusting the tension. So these uh, method feeders that I'm using today are Preston Innovations ones. Uh, it's the ICS system, which is an interchangeable system. And what you can do is you can swap between different feeders if you wanted to, or different weights. So for example, if I wanted to, I could swap this to a bomb or a maggot feeder um, without obviously re-rigging. I just uh, slide the method feeder off the stem and just slide whatever else I want onto the stem. So nice and easy. Next week I'm booked on at Cudmore, Monday and Tuesday, which is a carp and catfish water specimen lake. Um, so if you are interested in that as well, um, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'll try and cover all different types of fishing in these videos, uh, not just coarse fishing. You know, carp, catfish, uh, I'm going to try a bit of uh, lure fishing as well. So there's plenty to come. As you've just seen there, the uh, takes on these method feeders can be quite violent. Uh, so don't leave your rods unattended, like literally. Uh, your rod will be in before you know it. Uh, so I think we're into another carp here.
just spilt half a cup of coffee down me, but uh, we're into another fish. Lovely barbel. Uh, tip just went straight round. So, it's a decent size. Well, it's gone quite on both sides, but I'm going to have another uh, quick cast uh, just by these reeds down the bottom. I've seen a bit of movement there uh, next to that uh, other uh, platform. When you method feed a fishing like this, um, usually the bites that you get are really aggressive and they will pretty much just rip it off the rod rest and that's when you want to lift up into it. Um, you'll get twitches sometimes, you know, you'll get line bites. Um, it, sometimes it'll go right around and then it'll bounce back. Just leave it until it literally goes right round and then it stays round. Um, and then what you want to do is you just want to lift up into it. Make sure you drag set right so that you don't get hook pulls. Uh, so you, if you pull your, your uh, you should be able to pull your line off your reel uh, with you know moderate effort, uh, and that just that just saves you getting hook pulls and things like that. Okay, guys. So I'm just about to pack up. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's session. I hope you've picked up a few tips from it. Uh, one of the best bits about uh, this kind of setup is it's just as easy to pack up uh, as it is to set up. So I literally just collapse the rods down and they go straight into the uh, hold all. Please let me know if you want to watch more videos like this uh, or you want me to do something different. Uh, I have got a couple of specimen fishing videos coming up. Uh, so you'll have to keep an eye out for those um, hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss them thanks again for watching and i'll catch you soon